mysterious thing, time. Powerful, and when meddled with, dangerous. Time travel is one of the most interesting aspects in storytelling, and time travel in Harry Potter is one of the most unique takes on this phenomenon. In this video, I'm going to dive deep into Harry Potter lore, and explore everything you need to know about time travel in the world of Harry Potter. And on top of that, we're going to talk about how the Cursed Child completely retconned everything that was already established with time travel. If you've been a constant viewer of my channel, you know it's sort of become a running joke that I bash on this play. But seriously, they really messed up and I'm about to roast them. But first, let's look at the history of time travel. Magic is a very powerful thing, but time travel is a subject that not even magic can crack all the way. Time travel is possible in the wizarding world, but in a limited sense. Magic can only get you so far when it comes to certain subjects, and this is one of those cases. The subject of time is studied in the Department of Mysteries in the Ministry of Magic, and it's kept hushed up from the rest of the wizarding world. The people that work in the Department of Mysteries are known as unspeakables, and they are forbidden to disclose any details about their job or the work that they do. They started investigating time very early on, possibly even before the start of the Ministry of Magic itself. It's something that the Unspeakable studied more than anything else, and in their studies, they discovered that it's one of the most dangerous things to tamper with. The study of time had its own room dedicated to just this. The room houses clocks on every surface, both large and small. The room is filled with a busy and relentless ticking that fills the ears of anyone that enters. At the end of the room, there is a crystal bell jar with an egg inside of it. If you watch it long enough, you see the egg crack open to reveal a hummingbird that then flies to the top of the jar, and then you see it in reverse, the bird flying back down into the reformed and uncracked egg. This interesting demonstration has continued its cycle on a loop for hundreds of years. In 1996, during the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, however, the display was disturbed, which ruined the cycle of the egg and the hummingbird that had been going on for so long. This happened because Hermione stupefied a Death Eater, and his head fell in the bell jar, and as a result, his head transformed back and forth on a loop from a baby's head to an adult head. The hummingbird and the egg are not the only things of this nature in this room. If any object in this room does anything, it will do that thing in reverse. For example, when Harry and company were in this room, they knocked a grandfather clock down and it smashed, but it then unsmashed and put itself back together as it picked itself up. Over the years, the Unspeakables conducted many experiments with time, and in those experiments, many lives were lost. For years, they could not understand why time travelers who went great distances into the past kept dying. Then, one fateful day in 1899, one of the worst incidents in wizarding history occurred. It was perhaps the biggest breach of security that they ever faced, because they had to keep it hushed up from not only muggles, but wizards as well, because nobody knew of their findings on time yet. On that day, an unspeakable named Alois Mintumbo volunteered to attempt their most ambitious mission yet, as she went back 500 years, and as a result, there were dire consequences. She went back to the year 1402, and she was trapped there for five days. Nobody knows what she did during her time there, however, because when the other unspeakables finally retrieved her and brought her back to 1899, she was alive, but only just. She could not speak, she could not breathe, and her body was irreparably damaged. She was rushed to St. Mungo's Hospital, but she died moments after being admitted. After conducting further studies, they realized that her body had aged five centuries when returning, and the Unspeakables finally had their answer as to why everyone who traveled great distances were dead upon their return. However far back a time traveler went, when they returned, it would be as though they lived that whole time. For example, if someone went back 10 years, they could successfully arrive 10 years in the past without aging, but upon their return, they would age the 10 years between their arrival date and their return date. In that case though, if they were below the age of let's say 75, they would not die, they would just be 10 years older when they returned. Going back to Alois Mintumble's death, if you thought that was the only bad thing that happened that fateful day in 1899, you are in for a shock. Though nobody knows what she did for those 5 days while stuck in the past, her actions caused great disturbances to the life paths of all those she met, changing the course of their lives so dramatically that no fewer than 25 of their descendants vanished in the present, having never been born, or in this case, being unborn. And if that wasn't enough, in the days following, time itself was disturbed more than the unspeakables could have ever imagined. 
The Tuesday following her reappearance lasted two and a half days, whereas the following Thursday shot by in the space of four hours. The Ministry of Magic had a great deal of trouble covering this up, and after this incident, the Unspeakables decided not to tamper with time as much. From then on, they only experimented with going back a few hours. They eventually came to the conclusion that the farthest a person can go back in time without causing serious harm to the Traveler or time itself is around 5 hours. After many years, many tests, and many experiments, the Unspeakables were finally able to release their findings on time travel to the public, and they actually had a way to allow the public to manipulate time themselves. They did this by encasing a single hour reversal charm in a small hourglass that a witch or wizard could wear around their neck. All the witch or wizard has to do is revolve the number of hours he or she wants to go back. Three turns should do it, I think. They called these devices time turners. The hour reversal charm was extremely unstable, however, so putting this curse in a small object like the hourglass took a very long time, meaning there were very few time turners to go around. On the bright side, though, it was almost impossible for anybody besides an unspeakable to make these devices, meaning it was very hard to make these illegally and make a profit selling them. Releasing the ability to travel back in time to the public is of course extremely dangerous, so to ensure that nothing bad happened, the Ministry put some of its strictest laws and penalties and history into place. It's incredibly hard to have access to a time turner, and if you do get it, there are hundreds of laws that one must follow. This is because even going back in time a single hour can still have dramatic consequences. Because of this, time turners are generally only used to solve the most trivial problems of time management and are never used for greater or more important purposes. Saul Croker, an unspeakable who spent his entire career down in the Department of Mystery studying time, said, Just as the human mind cannot comprehend time, so it cannot comprehend the damage that will ensue if we presume to tamper with its laws. Dumbledore and Hermione sort of pushed the boundaries of these rules in the Prisoner of Azkaban, and they did use the Time Turner for greater and more important purposes than the average trivial problems of time management, as Dumbledore had Hermione go back in time and go behind the Ministry's back to release who they believed to be one of the most dangerous criminals, and on top of that, they again went behind the Ministry's back and saved Buckbeak the Hippogriff. And though the Ministry was wrong about executing both Black and Buckbeak, and ultimately the right thing was done, they still abused the power of the Time Turner, which Hermione, McGonagall, and Dumbledore had sworn they would only use for the trivial problem of Hermione's timetable. J.K. Rowling actually went into detail about how lightheartedly she dove into the subject of time travel in the third book. She said she had no regrets, but that the choices she made in that book opened a vast number of problems for her, because if wizards could go back and undo problems, where did that leave for future plots? She said she was careful when writing this in the third book, by making Dumbledore and Hermione emphasize how dangerous it would be to be seen in the past, reminding the reader that there might be unforeseen or dangerous consequences as well as solutions in time travel. You know the laws, Miss Granger. You must not be seen. Then, to ensure that everything was okay moving forward, she had Hermione give the only time turner to ever enter Hogwarts back. And finally, Rowling ensured that there would never be time travel in her series again, which brings us to the Battle of the Department of Mysteries. During the battle, chaos erupted, and in the chaos, every single time turner was smashed. This was Rowling's way of making sure that time turners would not play a part in future plot lines, and to make sure that the time turners did not leave gaping plot holes for the rest of the series. And now, this brings us to the Cursed Child, which according to Rowling is canon, so I guess I have to add this information. I'm just kidding. It's not canon. We're just gonna make fun of this book. This book retconned the crap out of time traveling in Harry Potter. The entire story of the Cursed Child basically revolves around time travel. Yes, that's right. After Rowling destroyed all of the time turners and made sure that time travel would not be a factor for the rest of the series, they decided to base an entire story around it. They revealed that Lucius Malfoy had a man named Theodore Knott create a new time turner. Because why not? So eventually, Hermione got her hands on this Time Turner, who by the way is Minister of Magic for some reason. And instead of destroying it, she decides to keep this Time Turner in her office. Then we have the weirdest combination of characters. Harry's son Albus, Draco's son Scorpius, and Voldemort's daughter Delphi steal it from her office. And yes, you heard me correctly. Voldemort has a daughter. That's completely mental. <laughs> Isn't it? But anyway, the three of them have a plan to go back in time to stop Cedric Diggory from getting ahead in the Triwizard Tournament, so that way, he wouldn't touch the cup and go to the graveyard where he was killed. 
and thus they would complete their mission saving Cedric. Albus and Scorpius first go back in time to the first task and they disarm Cedric so he would lose the task. Then the time turner brings them back because this specific time turner can only keep them in the past for 5 minutes before bringing them back to the present. You know, because plot convenience. They needed a way to get them back to the present in a hurry and didn't have the writing skills to come up with another simple way of doing that. Pulling stuff like this out of your ass that has no context with anything we've ever seen before shows how bad these writers are. So let's take a deeper look at this. Albus and Scorpius were in the year 2023 and went back to 1995. So according to time travel rules established in the Wizarding World, you age however long you travel in time when you return to the present. So they should have aged 28 years on this mission. But nope, let's just ignore all of the rules rolling established in 2015, a year before the Cursed Child came out. So, them going back in time messed all sorts of things up, creating an alternate timeline where Albus was sorted into Gryffindor, not Slytherin, where Ron and Hermione were not together, meaning their daughter Rose was never born, and Ron was with Padma Patil instead. And on top of that, their plan failed, because Cedric was still dead. So, once again, they travel from 2023 back to 1995, this time to the second task of the Triwizard Tournament. This time they succeed, and Cedric does not die in the graveyard. But we then return to the present with an even worse alternate timeline. Because Cedric lost the Triwizard Tournament, he was mad and became a Death Eater. I just can't with this book, it's so bad. Kind, sweet Cedric Diggory would never become a Death Eater, especially over something as small as losing a tournament. Then we find out that Harry is dead in this alternate timeline because Cedric killed Neville, so Neville never destroyed the final Horcrux, meaning Voldemort won when he fought Harry in the Battle of Hogwarts. This story gives me a headache. It's so poorly thought out. It's clear that these writers don't know the first thing about any of these beloved Harry Potter characters. Also, Albus and Scorpius went back another 28 years, so now if we put their two missions of going back in time together, they should have aged 56 years upon returning to the present. But anyway, Scorpius once again goes back to 1995 to fix everything, and he uses a shield charm to block the spell that they had shot the last time they went to the first task, and this ensures that Cedric gets to the cup and that he died. So Scorpius should have aged another 28 years, and if you add all of that up, he should be 84 years old. But nope, he's still a kid. The writers just keep ignoring canon information. Then, Albus, Scorpius, and Delphi all go back to the third task, and from there, they go even further back in time, going to the night Harry's parents died in 1981. Here, Delphi smashed the Time Turner, meaning they were all trapped. Then we find out, there is another Time Turner. Oh my god, what is this? And to make things even worse, this Time Turner doesn't have the 5 minute thing. Because again, plot convenience. Why not just change the rules to make your crappy story work? And let me tell you, it still doesn't work. Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, and Draco all go back to 1981 to save Albus and Scorpius, and some weird stuff happens where Harry turns into Voldemort and somehow speaks Parseltongue even though he lost that ability when the Horcrux inside of him was destroyed, so it's not there anymore and he shouldn't have that power. But this video is about time travel, so I'll just leave all of that other terrible writing out. So Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, Draco, Albus, and Scorpius all leave 1981 and go back to 2023, and this means they all should have aged 42 years. So at this point, Scorpius went back in time on four different occasions, and if you add all of that up, he should have aged 126 years. So yeah, he should be dead. Albus should have aged 98 years, and seeing as he was 14 when he did this, he should be 112 years old. So he should be dead too. And seeing as Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, and Draco were all around 41 or 42 years old, going back in time 42 years should have made them 83 or 84 years old when they returned to the present. But nope, they're still in their early 40s. So yeah, this story is truly terrible. It doesn't follow any of the rules that Rowling established, and there are just so many problems with it. I've barely scratched the surface here. I've only talked about the time travel mix-ups. So hopefully you enjoyed my ranting about The Cursed Child, because I'm always crapping on this book. I've done it in so many videos, and I just felt like I had to give you guys some proof on what I'm talking about and why I hate it so much. Putting aside my bashing on this play, we've seen that time travel in Harry Potter is one of the most interesting topics that the series dives into. It's dangerous, mysterious, and so fascinating. Thank you so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and more of this little dude. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. 
I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.